Hey there, it's me, Lottie, and today what we're gonna do is take a look at three beautiful children's books. Today we're gonna take a look at some children's books that I have been enjoying with my grandchildren and with myself. <laughs> and I just wanted to share them with you in case you're looking for some, you know, new ads for your kid's library or your own. One of them is more of a vintage or classic book that I found in a used bookstore with when I went with my granddaughter. And it is the most beautiful book. She loves this book. She has me read it all the time. And I love how she is trying to read it too. She likes to say, the fa a fairy went a marketing. It's just got a great ring to it. <laughs> the illustrations in this book, they're so beautiful. And it's such a cute story about this fairy. We love a good fairy moment. This fairy who goes shopping through the seasons and each time she buys an animal. She buys like a fish and then a mouse. Oh, one time she buys a coat, but she buys it for a frog. <laughs> and in every scene, she admires the creature for a while or they do some work together and then she lets it go. And, you know, like I said, the pictures and each one, like I said, goes through the seasons. It's a short book. And like I said, it may, well, I think that you could probably get it on thrift books or a used uh, book site, probably. Um, it's not available, you know, like I think on regular bookstores, uh, sites, but, um, it is just the most beautifully illustrated book about a lovely little fairy who's making her way through the seasons, doing her shopping. And like I said, you know, she's just taking care of the woodland creatures at the same time. It's so cute. We love this book. A Fairy Went a Marketing by Rose Fileman, and it's illustrated by Jamichael. Hinterly. Beautiful. Just a beautiful book. I really, this was a good find. And I love that it was uh, inscribed here to my dearest Cameron. Merry Christmas, love, Mrs. Halia, 1986. So maybe this was a gift from a teacher. How nice. The other book I want to share is one that goes along with my food justice work or anybody's food or just food work in general, food systems work. And this is called Alex McGreen and the Tale of the Mysterious Kale. And this was written by Raina R. Andrews. And I want to tell you a little bit about Raina Andrews and her work, although the book is dedicated to her son, Julian, and it says to all the young girls and boys who eat their veggies, you're stronger than you think. Fruits and vegetables bring out your superpowers. And Raina Andrews um, has her name in the book as a public health ambassador, and she works with the healthy food movement. And she works around food sovereignty. It says, uh, Raina's mission in life is to use her power and influence to champion causes that empower our next generation. She envisions a world that operates in abundance and celebrates collective impact that results in healthy and intelligent communities at peace with one another for generations to come. That's just a small little blurb. The illustrator, Brian Zadaka, is in Rochester, Wisconsin, 
and he loves drawing, movies, tacos, and being nice. <laughs> so anyway, that's just a little blurb. But this is such an adorable story. It manages to pack a lot of good entry points to discuss a variety of issues around food justice, food sovereignty, environmental justice, health, healing justice, being neighborly in community, growing food, the benefits of kale. I mean, it really is a good jump off. I can see using this book if you are doing food systems work, if you're a teacher, or if you're a parent or a gardener um, who's interested in helping young people get excited about growing food and what it can do for you and being um, active in your community. Plus, it's a really good family story. The illustrations are beautiful and I love them. It tells the story of what happens when there is a alert about water contamination, water being contaminated with lead. All the students are sent home from school and Alex is wondering, what can I do? What can I do about this? You know? So... She and her grandfather, well, they devise a plan. <laughs> they devise a plan about growing some kale with uh, with different with some different interesting results. We're gonna do some more with this book because I believe there's some recipes to go along with it, and so we're gonna focus on this a little bit more in the coming months. The last, but not least and possibly the newest of the three, is this book here that, this is a delicious book. It's called The Me I Choose to Be, written by Natasha Anastasia Tarpley, art by Regis and Karen Bethencourt. This, it's, it's like a poem, so it's written in uh, verse. Like, my creativity and curiosity flow without end. And if I meet an obstacle, I just begin again. I am a planet, a limitless galaxy, and I am the me that I choose to be. That's just one page. And then there's a photograph, an illustration. The pictures in this book are absolutely breathtaking. This is the inner cover that has a little snapshot of most of the ones that are featured in here. I can't even begin. I would be just going through this whole book. I am a weaver of words that quickly take flight and stretch into stories, fluttering off into the night. Look at that. And then some are so creatively staged, like I can't even, oh, I just cannot even begin to tell you how beautiful this book is. And like I said, it is a story about limitless possibility. And it's something that I think your kids, well, I got excited about and I'm still sharing it with my kids. So um, I'm hoping that they will get excited about it too and, and just be inspired to be creative, to be free to be themselves. And it's just like I said, I cannot, <laughs> I mean, y'all, <gasps> I cannot, I cannot with this book. It is so amazing. So the author says she started writing when she was seven years old. And from that young age, she understood that stories could change the world. She is the author of the best-selling picture book, I Love My Hair, and the acclaimed middle grade mystery, The Harlem Charade, among other titles. 
Natasha is the co-founder of Wunderbar Media, a project seeking to expand the depictions of children of color in media. And she lives with her family in Chicago, Illinois. And now Regis and Karen Bethencourt are the husband and wife duo behind Creative Soul Photography and the New York Times bestselling authors of Glory. With more than 10 years of working with hundreds of children, families, and brands, they specialize in child and lifestyle photography while incorporating authentic visual storytelling. And yes, they do. Yes, they do. So now I'm excited by all those titles that were mentioned in that blurb, and I got to get all those books too. But this here, like I said, absolutely, just absolutely gorgeous book. I mean, this is a coffee table book. It's a collectible book. It is to be read and enjoyed for generations to come. So you might want to get two copies. Anyway. That's the end of my video. <laughs> Do you like content like this? If so, please like this video and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm so that more people can see this stuff. Look at these beautiful selections here. Oh man, I really enjoyed reading all of these and sharing them with you today. So I hope that you're well. I hope you're taking really good care of yourself. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.